to the uh, Milford Haven Museum's Young People's Book Launch. And we have today, uh, I've got pictures here of this literacy project, um, which is part and parcel of the whole audience development um, behind the two-year project. Uh, pilot project of the Heritage Lottery. The fact that we are publishing a book of young people's work is entirely due to uh, our American funder, uh, the lovely Mara Pearl, who is, I hope, um, online. I think she can see us from the States. I think I have been taken aback by the quality of the writing uh, that the young people involved have actually produced. And I think that this project in its own way um, allows us and invites us um, to dare to dream of what we might be able to achieve collectively if we work together um, to actually build a cultural vision which includes a museum that has a legacy, that is sustainable within a cultural um, vision for Milford and uh, the surrounding area. I, I have a personal belief that um, people that don't know the history of, of, about the place they're from are a little bit like a leaf that doesn't realise it's attached to a tree. Um, and this fantastic project is about young people looking at the past, looking at the present, building their knowledge about history and what's going on around them and then preparing themselves to be that fantastic future generation that we all are going to expect a huge amount from. We've done an awful, awful, awful lot of damage during the 21st century, one of the key themes of, 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 um, the, uh, of the book, um, and it's going to be these young people um, who are going to help put that right for future generations. I'd like to invite um, some of the pupils and their teachers up to uh, tell us a little bit about what it's meant to them to see their writing published. I felt excited that my work was going to be published in a book. Being able to use a real life character who lived in Malta Haven made it feel real. I loved doing the workshop in a museum because it felt like the people who used to live in the town were real and we could see the things that they touched and used. I liked the way that we included all different sorts of writing in our book. Poet, poems, stories and writing about a character. I enjoyed the way that we compared our lives to those of people living in our area and in the past. The museum to me is so important because it actually is a place where our heritage, our history can be celebrated by all. And Yes, I'm that old, I remember, when it was almost quite cutting edge to see the figure of Nelson there and there were some interactive bits and pieces. One of the things I think that is so important for our pupils is that just because we live in the very, very depths of West Wales, that we make sure that our children have every sort of access to every possible um, experience culturally and that the fact that we are perhaps geographically challenged doesn't mean to say that they don't have the most cutting edge and everything that they deserve because these are our future. For the children to have that opportunity and come back buzzing, excited, telling you all about everything and as a teacher you live for those light bulb moments so when they actually realise that their surname is there too and it's Starbuck, is that an American Starbuck? And then come back and they've got a grin right away across their faces. You know that something's gone well and the museum has done its job, which is to be inspirational. Thank you for allowing us to share our experience in taking part in this project. It has allowed us to work with the museum, established writers, and to be part of a writing a book about our local area. We enjoy working with the museum because when we go to the museum, we get to learn all about our local area. When we go to school group, we get to speak to volunteers who share their knowledge with us and we wouldn't get that if we were just members of the public. We get to see all the displays. We can ask the staff questions and interact with all the items in the museum. We source the information we needed for our topic in school. I discovered that there is a bunch of history behind my local area. So much has happened before we even before we were even here. The rare learning opportunity I had to focus on this beautiful scene 
and pick apart the details to tell people how I see a place. I think more creative work should be done like that, and it's incredible I got to display my view of Milford in a book for people to read and form their own opinion. Actually, I would like to talk about the honour to be, to be known as a published writer. <laughs> <laughs> and as someone who's only in the Nile, coming up to year 10, it's a fantastic thing to have. Literature is something that I enjoy writing. As, I mean, as long as it's not essays in English. <laughs> <laughs> and read into it. So it's a fantastic opportunity that gives you a, a wide imagination. I'd like to thank everyone here for not just participating, but helping out. And I'm just really thankful to Sue for giving me this opportunity to even do this at all. So thank you very much. We live in Pembroke. What's good about that? So then, when I started looking around, I saw all the whales information, all of it was so cool. And I just saw a bridal section, and I absolutely love fashion, so that just caught my attention. And that's what I based my whole little short story on. And I just thought it was so interesting how that museum had so much, and it even had a section for women and what we would have gone through and what the men had gone through. And I just think it was so inspiring because I never knew any of it. Uh, I'm sure that for Mara, who I hope is listening, I hope can hear us there, um, uh, that, that she can you know, see the results of, of her funding. Um, I have said here on, on our, on our um, uh, itinerary that it would be nice maybe if Tom could present a, a book to each of the eight students who's just um, been talking to us. children's lives. Uh, it's important, I feel, uh, I think Sue said this herself, it, it's important that students are seen as genuine creators of content in museums. Do you agree with that, Sue? Um, I can't even read my favourite bit. I don't know if this person's here or not. Um, it's page 65. It's a great example of, um, of how a student has come and seen a museum, I think, and seen something and been inspired by it. It's called Chimney of Fire uh, by Maisie and Jay. Um, is that okay if I read it? I think this, this, to, me, this to me is like what it's all about. Um, I'm hoping anyway this is true. I'm hoping this person went to the museum, saw something about whales and thought I'm all right. Uh, we've not long ago harpooned the sperm whale. Up goes the cry, chimney of fire, chimney of fire. It's something I learned today as well across there. Um, that means the whale has been has spouted blood. I'm sorry, it's a bit gory this. It's all kids love it. Dark and red, it squirts on me. It turns my stomach, but that's life as a green. To me, that, that, that example there of how somebody has been inspired by museum collections and, and working at looking at the museum and um, working with people to volunteer from the museum. He has played a very, very, very big part of this, to which the museum thank her very, very much for that. And we look forward to working with you in the future as well, Mara. So if I can actually, if it's okay, introduce you to the lovely Mara Pearl now. Hopefully you'll be able to hear her. To say I've been so inspired hearing our students and our supporters and all of you who were there today. Thank you so much for joining us. I think there's some element here of full circle. And, um, you know, the, our ancestors traveled the globe and people from Milford Haven, Wales, founded Milford, Connecticut, Milford Haven, Virginia, Milford, New Zealand, and many other places. So the outreach of this seemingly small coastal town is very well established and it's one of the things that our history studies help to uncover. To you students, I am so proud of your work. Your, your narratives and your scenes, your poems, your memoirs, they take us into the heart of your portion of the world. 
So through your words and your drawings, we have a lens that allows us to see through time and hear the voices of those who lived here in different eras and feel the very breezes that blew across these hills and waters even as they do right now. I have been finding this journey so wonderful. It requires a lot of research and dedication, and sometimes it's rather difficult, but always it's a thrill because I keep learning so much. So I'm happy to pass along whatever I have learned, and I must say I already have learned from you from our beautiful book. is a terrific example of uh, how funding from the National Lottery can boost the resilience of a heritage organization and make it robust and future ready. Um, the last few years has been a hard time for, uh, for the heritage and charity sectors and despite this the project team have preserved Everyone who has involved in this project should be really proud of what has been achieved. Every workshop, every creative workshop has a particular chemistry. And for me, that's the great joy of doing them, the great joy of running them. Because you don't know until the kids walk into the room what individuals you're going to get, what their vibe is going to be how willing they are to, going to be to engage with the project and with the material. But the, the lovely thing about this project was as soon as they started engaging with the historical material, they were excited. It has been great being involved in projects through Pembrokeshire, but I know funding has been drying up, so some are projects that we used to run with um, writers and storytellers and artists that have, have disappeared. So to have this opportunity was wonderful. And as you said, the children were phenomenal. Um, we had some children who were having additional learning needs, and they came in and they were very, very hesitant and lacking in confidence, weren't they? But by the end of the day, they really found their voice and they, you could see they were enjoying engaging in the process and sharing with each other. Because that was the other thing we encouraged them to do, wasn't it? Was to share their work yes. and find their audience. So it's been a great pleasure. I just want to say really from the first that this project has come from the heart. The people of Milford Haven, Wales, touched my heart when I first visited many years ago. And the feeling has never left me. And I mentioned earlier my full story. I didn't mention that it was uh, during um, one of my visits to Milford Haven that I uh, found out from a relative that my own ancestry in, um, goes back to Morganshire from the 1500s and then also Pembrokeshire in the 1600s, two, two lines of my family. So although I am American, I dare to say, I'm also at least a little bit Welsh. I wanted to acknowledge Barbara Fitzgerald at the town council because I emailed her to begin with and she helped me get the ball rolling. And then our wonderful Colin, who seems to have served on most of the boards in Milford Haven, uh, <laughs> including the council and of course now at the museum. And Colin, you've opened so many doors. And Sue Davis, your vision and commitment guided us every step of the way. And you have become a cherished friend and partner. I mentioned earlier, I don't know if we have students still in the room, but I am so proud of your work. Uh, your narrative, your scenes, your poems, your memoirs really took us into the heart of Milford Haven and Rochelle that very special region of the world. And I feel you have allowed us to see through time. So I am excited to honor the past with our studies and to honor the present with our creativity. So, deal. thank you.
Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. And I can assure you, Mara, this is not the end. You don't get rid of us that easy. We will definitely be in contact. This is merely the beginning. So we will be in contact definitely. But thank you very much for all your support.